Does salt cause multiple sclerosis? If you have MS, should you keep a low salt diet? Well, I'll tell you straight out, I could not find a single randomized control trial that addresses this issue. However, according to this cross-sectional study in Kuwait, people with a high salt diet have a five times greater risk of MS. In this video, I'll review the overall scientific evidence for a possible association between sodium and MS and give my personal opinion citations below. Sodium chloride table salt is everywhere. It's in processed foods like chips and crackers and soups and basically anything in a package. And of course, if you go to restaurants, they add salt in abundance. And of course, condiments, soy sauce, hot sauce, barbecue sauce, ketchup. If you are very strict with your diet, eating whole fruits and vegetables, lean meats, no condiments, no processed food, no eating out, you would eat about two grams of sodium per day, which is what the World Health Organization recommends, but the mean global consumption of sodium is around four to five grams per day, which works out to around 10 to 11 grams of salt because it contains both sodium and chloride, so not all the mass of the molecule is just the sodium molecule, and salt is generally thought to be bad in excess and causes hypertension and can contribute to increased risk of heart disease, and again, according to WHO, it contributes to nearly two million extra excess deaths worldwide, and we simply eat too much of it in modern society. But does salt affect the immune system, and could it contribute to a disease like MS? Indeed, salt affects the immune system profoundly. This is a compilation of different basic science studies, mostly looking at cell culture and the effect of different immune cells under high salt conditions. For example, Th17 cells, a subtype of helper T cells, are increased in high salt conditions. These are known to be involved in MS inflammation. Also, the behavior of helper T cells changes. There's an increase in the Th1 pathway, known to be associated with autoimmune diseases, and a reduction in the Th2 pathway. This is sort of the opposite of the effect of beta interferons, drugs which treat multiple sclerosis. Also, there's a reduction in regulatory T cells with the CD25 receptor. There was a recent Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology awarded for the discovery of these cells a long time ago. It turns out they're very important in regulating the immune system and preventing autoimmune diseases. And again, they're reduced in high salt conditions. Here's a study on healthy controls, people without MS subjected to a low salt diet. They started off with 12 grams of sodium intake per day, and then over 200 days they reduced to nine grams a day, then six grams a day, and then back up to high salt, 12 grams a day. So six grams a day would be something similar to what WHO recommends. And you can see their monocytes drop down under low salt conditions, but then go back up when they go back to the higher salt diet. Diet, monocytes are white blood cells known to be involved in MS inflammation. They also showed a reduction in pro-inflammatory cytokines. These are cell signaling proteins involved in promoting inflammation, such as IL-6 and IL-23, and increase in the anti-inflammatory cytokine interleukin-10. So it seems like a low-salt diet calms down the immune system. Here's a study on mice who were subjected to a high-salt diet, and you can see on the right high salt diet HSD versus normal salt diet on the left and they're looking at regulatory T cells and they find that they've changed. A much higher percentage of them are secreting interferon gamma. This is a pro-inflammatory cytokine and this is thought to be very abnormal. Interferon gamma was actually once studied as a potential treatment of MS but it actually makes MS worse. So something is happening to the regulatory or suppressor T cells in in high salt conditions. Here's another animal study. This is a mouse model of MS, experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, or EAE, where mice are induced to have an autoimmune disease of the central nervous system, mimicking features of MS. On the y-axis, you see the clinical score, or level of disability. Higher score means the mice are more disabled. And on the x-axis is time since induction of the disease. And you can see with the control diet in the dark circles, the 
lower sodium diet, the mice were less disabled, but with the diet high in sodium chloride, or salt, they did worse, they were more disabled. In the same study, they also studied lauric acid, which is a long-chain saturated fatty acid, which didn't seem to make any additional difference. Here's an interesting study where they looked at men with MS, and they did MRI scans of areas other than the nervous system. And they were actually looking at the skin, and they were able to measure sodium concentration in the skin on MRI scans, and divided them into those with high sodium in the skin versus low sodium. And those with higher sodium had much more MRI activity compared to those with low skin sodium. You can see that labeled in dark. It's about 65% versus 30%, a pretty big difference, though they did the same study in women and there were no differences, so it could be a fluke. But what if we look at actual humans with MS? Does a high or low salt diet make a difference? Well, here's a cohort study from South America, Buenos Aires, published in 2014. They had 70 people with relapsing MS and they didn't do dietary surveys, they estimated their sodium intake based on how much sodium they excreted in the urine. It turns out a very high percentage of sodium you eat, you urinate out, so it does correlate with dietary sodium. And they found there was a pretty strong correlation. So if you had a medium sodium intake as adjudicated by your urine sodium excretion, compared to low sodium intake, you had a 2.75 fold increased risk of having relapses, in other words, clinical attacks. So nearly threefold higher risk of relapses with medium versus low sodium. And for high sodium, it was a 3.9 fold increased risk of relapses compared to a low sodium diet. So nearly a fourfold increased risk and high sodium compared to low sodium sodium was linked to a 3.4 fold higher risk of new lesions on MRI. So a pretty strong association. But this may be a little bit too good to be true because dietary sodium doesn't really correlate that strongly with urine sodium. This study looked at 24 hour urine sodium, how much sodium you excrete by urine in 24 hours versus dietary sodium intake per day. And they're correlated, but the correlation coefficient or R value is only 0.29. So it seems like you really have to ask people about their diet if you want to know what it is. But in this cross-sectional study in Kuwait, which I mentioned at the start of the video, they did do dietary surveys and they found a huge difference. They had 152 people with MS versus 279 controls and those having excess salt intake had a five-fold higher risk of MS. I don't know the exact cutoff they used. I couldn't find the full article. You can see the confidence interval from 2.22 to 11.5 does not overlap one, hence this is statistically significant and very clinically significant, a five-fold difference. But other studies go against the association between high salt diet and MS. For instance, this is the famous Nurses Health Study, and they actually looked at two cohorts between 1984 and 2004, and also 1991 and 2009, and combined them for greater statistical power, a total of 175,000 participants, and there was no association with high salt diet and MS. Here they divided them into different deciles of total dietary sodium intake. So the first decile would be the 10th of the population with the lowest sodium intake. And they compared everyone else to this group. And you can see the relative risk was right about one. In fact, they had slightly lower risk than this low sodium intake group, but no statistically significant difference. High salt diet did not increase the risk of MS. Here's a study in pediatric MS and salt intake. Senior author, Dr. Emanuela Wabant at University of California, San Francisco. They had 170 children with MS and compared them to 331 controls and did dietary surveys. You can see the children with MS, their sodium intake, the graph, there was quite a large range in individuals versus controls on the bottom, but there were no clear differences between the two groups. Salt intake 
didn't seem to influence MS risk. This publication is an interesting analysis of the benefit trial. This was a randomized controlled trial of the MS drug beta seron in something called clinically isolated syndrome. Clinically isolated syndrome, or CIS, refers to a situation where someone has a single demyelinating event, such as optic neuritis or transverse myelitis, but does not meet the full diagnostic criteria of MS, but still has a risk of getting multiple sclerosis. I won't get into the technicalities, but the diagnostic criteria have changed over the years, and the majority of people in this trial would be considered to have multiple sclerosis by modern standards. So think of this as a trial in early multiple sclerosis. They looked at salt intake as inferred by 24-hour urine sodium level. Again, I don't necessarily think this correlates that strongly with sodium intake. It correlates, but not perfectly. However, this was not correlated at all with risk of getting diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, in other words, having a subsequent attack or new lesion on MRI, or having different MRI outcomes such as more lesions or having more relapses or more disability as measured by the expanded disability status scale. So salt intake as measured by 24-hour urine sodium didn't seem to matter. Now I should mention that this sort of data can get very messy when people fill out dietary surveys. It's not necessarily perfectly accurate. Also, a lot of factors influence salt intake like how much you exercise, how high the temperature is, whether or not you use air conditioning because you're sweating more if it's very hot. And of course, salt is correlated with many other aspects of diet. If you eat less processed food, you consume less salt, but other aspects of your diet are probably healthier. For example, this is a study on the Terry Walls diet, the Walls protocol popularized by Dr. Terry Walls, who actually had improvements in her own multiple sclerosis when using a modified paleo diet. And the recommendations of this diet are things such such as eating a lot of vegetables, avoiding processed foods, eating certain types of meats. She doesn't really talk about salt, but when studying people who are following the diet, their sodium consumption is quite low, only about two grams a day. Again, this is not specifically a low salt diet, but when you avoid processed foods, you're probably gonna have a low sodium diet. So she's essentially giving people the WHO recommendation to keep a low salt diet, even without explicitly mentioning it. So salt is just very confounded with other aspects of nutrition. So I end with my personal opinion. I'm not necessarily convinced that salt causes MS. If you look at the nurse's health study or the university of California, San Francisco Pediatric MS study, they really didn't find a correlation. However, a few observational studies suggest that salt intake may influence the prognosis of MS. And when I see odds ratios of three or five, it makes me think that it could be causal. Certainly not proof, but it could be causal. And considering the other benefits of a low sodium diet, I personally do recommend this. I think it's very reasonable to try to lower sodium in the diet, in particular by avoiding processed foods, and this would likely prevent other health complications. And we know that medical comorbidities like hypertension are on their own associated with a worse prognosis. So I think practically speaking, we don't need definitive proof to make changes. I do recommend a low salt diet to my patients with MS. And you can start by simply eliminating processed foods, chips, crackers, that kind of thing, avoiding adding salt to food, including sauces, again, barbecue sauce, hot sauce, ketchup, soy sauce, that type of thing, and try to prepare your own food and don't eat out at restaurants as much because they do tend to add a lot of salt. But keep in mind what I said, that salt requirement does vary a lot. If you live in a warm area or you're exercising a lot and sweating a lot, you may need a little bit more sodium. Also, if you have high blood pressure and you're taking diuretics and you dramatically lower your sodium intake, say, from the standard American diet, we're eating five grams of sodium a day to two grams of sodium a day, you may need to watch your blood pressure and potentially stop your high blood pressure medication if it becomes too low. You do have to monitor that. But I'd be interested to know if you have MS, do you watch your salt intake? Do you measure it explicitly? Have you noticed any effects with higher or lower salt intake? And let me know if you have suggestions for future videos.